we have a new train. I am venturing into unknown territory with this one. I've never owned something like this before. And I'm quite excited. Uh, I found this on eBay for a really, really reasonable price of around $180 shipped to my front door. I figured that for what it is, it seemed pretty reasonable. So hopefully it arrived in good shape. The only thing I don't like was shook the box a little bit and the package had quite a bit of room to slide around in here. So, oh boy. It's a west side. Wow, that is heavy. Uh, mom can move. I really hope that nothing is bent in here. So, as far as I know, the only things about this is that it does not run. And it will need a little bit of a cleanup, but I'm just going to make sure that it's open the right way around. Well, all the foam is gone. It doesn't feel like anything moves substantially. Let's do the tender first. Really hope nothing's broken. I don't like this packaging. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, actually. The, as you can see, it's got a lot of patina on it. It's even got Katie's. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely going to need cleaned. But that is spectacular. You may or may not be able to tell what this is by the tender. If you know your steam well enough, I mean, you know me. All right. Oh my goodness. It is a Union Pacific MT-73. Holy moly, that thing is beautiful. And it's in really good shape too. My goodness. Look at this. That's in fantastic condition, actually, considering that it wasn't packaged incredibly well. Oh, I can't wait to get this thing cleaned up and looking nice. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, it definitely needs a good cleanup, but that is so cool. All right, I'm going to inspect this thing a little more and then we'll take it to the workbench and see what we can do with it. So as you guys can see, the locomotive is now completely cleaned. Um, I apologize for not filming the process. I got kind of hung up uh, doing that. So how I did it was I just kind of looked around for best ideas for cleaning a brass model train and the solution that I found was use baking powder and lemon juice uh, and it's I think it's two parts baking powder to one part lemon juice and it creates a paste that you then spread over the entire surface of the model and it doesn't exactly it said it didn't exactly take uh, foam damage off but it seems to have done a pretty good job. I didn't do the trailing truck, obviously. I left that on the chassis. Uh, but the rest of the body cleaned up fantastic. Here, I'm getting the cradle out of the way here. So this thing is just beautiful. It looks awesome. And here's the tender. Tender was definitely the worst of the two think because uh, I had more foam damage on it yeah that is awesome I guess the the next thing I'll do is 
I'll show you guys the interior of the locomotive. There's really not, there, I don't, haven't really seen any way to get inside the tender. Uh, there's these three screws here that I might try and take off, but not really sure. In the meantime, I'll take the shell off the engine and I'll show you the chassis. All right, so I'm trying something new here. I'm using my helping hands <laughs> to hold my phone up so I can film this. Got a new precision screwdriver set from good old Harbor Freight. <laughs> I'm replacing all of my existing screwdrivers back here in my tool thing. Most of them anyway, there's a few of them I'm gonna keep. So let's see, we have a fine tip flathead. Yes, we do. All right, so. Since I already had the chassis apart, um, this isn't gonna be anything new. This is just to show you guys this assembly process, how I get this thing apart. So you have to take off the trailing truck because it's actually part of securing the body in place. This is a giant long screw here. It's nice that it's one whole assembly. Uh, you don't wanna lose that nut though. Then there's a screw with a hole, threaded hole through it in the front that this threads into, and that's what secures the front of the boiler to the chassis. And then there are two screws under the cab. And because this is brass, you have to work with tweezers. Otherwise, you'll lose your uh, hardware. Not fun, and unfortunately I don't have any replacement screws. I need to, I've got a bunch of spare screws, but nothing that at really acts as a replacement to anything on here. So, there's those. And that being said, chassis comes right out. So there you go, that is the chassis. Uh, like I said, I already cleaned this thing up as much as I could. This thing didn't need any cleaning, really. I did clean the valve gear hanger and tried to clean up the rods as much as I could. As you see, I kind of took the nickel off of some of it, especially that one. And this stuff got kind of caked. Um, but yeah, it's got a KTM five-pole motor in the back, open frame. This thing is actually really quiet. It runs super super nice i'm shocked actually at how good it runs I replaced the drive tube the original stuff was dry and rotted so i took a piece of two uh, no four millimeter tubing and just super glued used a little bit of super glue to hold that in place i uh, had to play with the gearbox a bit uh, i made the discovery when i opened this thing up actually that i don't think this model's had very much runtime at all it's very very clean as far as I'm concerned. The grease was still good. I went ahead and uh, scooped it all out, put new stuff in. Gearbox, uh, I thought it was, might have to make modifications to this, but it looks like fortunately this one has the brass worm uh, nylon idler to a brass bull gear, so don't have to worry about that. I contemplated wanting to swap this motor out for a flywheel, or I'm, I'm sorry, I want to add a flywheel. I wanted to swap this motor out for a can motor, but this thing performs so nice. Uh, I haven't tested current draw on it yet, but it, it's such a good motor that I don't know if I'm going to have to. Um, I might be able to get away with using this one. I don't know for sure, but we'll see. Because um, I know that uh, some people do just use these when they convert stuff to DCC because these things don't tend to wear out. I mean, it's still really stinking strong for what it's worth. The magnet could be stronger, but as a stand, it's pretty pretty darn strong. Uh, and it needs to be, because this is a heavy locomotive. Case in point, um, that is the lead brick that is inside this model. I think it's lead, anyway. Uh, it would have to be, because it wouldn't be that dense. Yeah, this thing is ridiculously heavy. The boiler shell by itself is 350 grams, about 12 and a half ounces, roughly. 
So, and then the chassis alone is about 250 grams, nine ounces, give or take. So we're looking at 600 grams of locomotive or however much that is an ounce. I'm sorry, I'm using my uh, metric scale and I'm not mathing fast enough. Yeah, this is a phenomenal engine. $180 for this thing, and it's already looking significantly better. Um, as for the tender, uh, like I said, I already opened most of this up. Um, it does not come apart except for being able to take off the chassis. Um, unfortunately, there is no way inside the tender unless you desolder stuff. Now... Uh, so this, these three screws here only take off the frame, which allows you to get access to the trucks. So you can take them apart for painting or cleaning or whatever. Um, again, more evidence of this thing. I barely cleaned these. I didn't have very much to clean off of the wheels at all. This thing has seen probably least amount of runtime of any model I've purchased ever uh, secondhand. So... Yeah, I'm very excited and happy with this model and how it's turned out. So I guess the next element is to get this thing back together and then throw it on the test track and let you guys see it run. All right, so there's our beautiful mountain down onto the test track that I set up. It's just a set of kind of unit track. Let's see how it runs. Beautiful. As I expected. No headlight, of course, but that can be fixed. It's fantastic electrical pickup, too. I do have to watch uh, when it hits dips in the track, though, because it will short out. there. Yeah, this is a phenomenal running engine. West Side really did do a good job on these. At least in my opinion. Uh, others might have a different opinion. Yeah, very happy with the results on that one. Uh, before I move on, though, I do want to mention, I forgot while I was working on... Sorry, I'm looking for my pointer. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, well, I was working on this thing, there were a lot of parts that had loose solder joints on, specifically on this side. This was the side that got the most foam damage. So, I had to solder this pipe back into position here. Uh, the bell wire housing, or the air pneumatic line was, uh, sold excuse me, not soldered back into place. Um, now it is, I think. Oh no, it's not. I'll have to fix that again. Oh well, that's not a big issue. It Mostly stays in place, so I can't really gripe too much. Uh, I also had to solder the, the slide bars back in on this thing. Holy moly, that was a pain in the butt to try and get to work. My goodness. Um, the bottom one went okay. Top one, not so much. Uh, I ended up having to super glue this one in place on the in the cylinder head and on here because the solder just wouldn't take. I cleaned it, did everything I could to clean it, you know, and the solder just would not take to the brass. Uh, I took all the original solder off too. So, I don't know, I gave up and just super glued it in place. You can see where it's just bare brass now because um, I took all the nickel off trying to sand it in a bad solder off of it. Uh, what else? I did also have to super glue the coupler back in place because unfortunately, like I said, I don't have uh, correct springs. I mean, springs, screws 
and the one screw that I did have for the front of this, I had to take the coupler out to uh, clean the pilot with the solution. I didn't know how it was going to react to the plastic, but uh, what ended up happening was, unfortunately, I put the screw in the wrong hole, and it not only broke the screw out, you know, it's actually stripped out down inside here, um, it also broke the head off the coupler because <laughs> it was sitting too far back. So I guesstimated where the best position was for this and then super glued the coupler box in place. Uh, not my best solution and I'll definitely try to find a replacement screw to go in the front. But for now, that works. I'm not going to complain. So here is where I get into my future plans for this particular model. I have every intention of converting this locomotive to DCC in sound and completely painting it. Uh, again, this is something that I have never done before. I've never worked on a model from the ground up like this. Uh, I don't exactly know what I'm doing per se. I'm doing as much research as I can to try and figure out the best method for brass DCC installation. Um, and there's plenty of good material out there, of course, but uh, again, this is completely new territory for me, so I will be learning all throughout this process, and I think the biggest challenge that I'm going to face is where am I going to put the speakers, because only way I can get inside the tender tank, is where because that's where I wanted to put them, is to desolder the tender in some way. I think that's going to be by taking the oil deck off. I don't want to have to do that, but that's probably what it's going to come down to. Or I can find a solution to put it inside the cab or put a boiler barker somewhere in the boiler. I don't know. But yeah, my plan is headlight might even try to backlight the marker lights maybe. Number boards, I don't care. Smoke is probably not going to happen. Sorry, Mark. Um, might put a can motor in depending on how this motor fares. I think it's going to be okay considering how quiet it is and all that. And then I got to put a backup light on the tender, uh, which is going to involve some drilling and not exactly looking forward to that because obviously you can screw it up pretty fast if you're not careful. Oh, and I might also go for firebox flicker and cab light too, because I think that would be really cool. Be my only other engine that's got a cab light other than my big boy back here. If you guys have any suggestions or tips for what I should do, uh, please, by all means, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.